I've been referring to the next nine days of my life as the busy week for the last few months as soon as I realized just how much I had crammed into the space of nine days. And I've decided to make it even busier by vlogging it. So hello, welcome to a very, very, very busy week in my life. The things I have going on. Today is Saturday. I am heading back to my family home today where I will remain until next Monday when the busy period ends. So today I am going to a party this evening. Tomorrow I might or might not be going into bath if I'm not then that kind of frees up tomorrow's a non-busy day but I'll probably do some photo editing because I was at a wedding yesterday so the busyness actually kind of started yesterday then Monday Tuesday I am working Wednesday I have a friend's wedding Thursday Friday and Saturday I am in Wales visiting another friend and then on Sunday there is a street party and then on Monday I'm just working from home from my mum's house and then I'm coming back here Monday evening so it's a lot of different things happening. I haven't yet decided what book is gonna be accompanying me for this incredibly busy week. I feel like it needs to be something really easy and light that I could just dip in and out of in between the mania. So I will let you know what that is when I pick it. I'm gonna be continuing listening to the audiobook of Blue Sisters by Coco Malore. I was reading that in my Turning 29 vlog. Is that the vlog? I don't know what vlogs I'm working on at the moment, but I'm gonna continue reading that from that vlog because I didn't wanna rush finishing it. I'm really enjoying it, so. That is my audiobook and probably another audiobook once I finish that one because I'm doing a lot of driving so I think I'll get a lot of listening time in for my audiobooks. I'm also launching something very exciting this month and it kind of ties in with the theme of being busy because this is something that I'm kind of trying to target towards people like myself that might have a lot going on but maybe want to be part of a little online bookish community. So I am going to be launching my own tiny book club. I'm going to be launching this through Fable but the idea is that this is for people that want to join a book club but don't have the time to dedicate to a full-sized novel every month or find that just a little bit overwhelming. I do currently run a Patreon book club that is obviously exclusive to my patrons and we read a book every other month or like the book club pick lasts for two months basically to try and make it less daunting but I wanted to have a monthly book club that was public open to absolutely everybody this one is not exclusive to my patrons this is available to anybody who wants to join that is focusing on shorter books so I called it the tiny book club because it's about tiny books and it's a tiny book club which I thought was cute and basically if you are busy if you are overwhelmed and want to join a book club but don't want to have that big book fear or if you just want to read a couple of novellas I have started the tiny book club through Fable there is a link down below basically all you need to do to join is download the Fable app click the link down below and then you can join the book club you can take part in the discussions we will have a new tiny book every month I'm trying to focus these on being like around 200 pages slash below maybe like you know 10 or so pages over that but generally around that marker point hopefully good books for discussion hopefully some fun books I'm going to try and vary the genre so if you don't like like one book one month then it might be totally different the next month so there's going to be hopefully always something for everybody. I really like using Fable for book clubs. I use Fable for our Patreon book club and it's such a good platform because it breaks down every single book automatically into the parts of that book. So into chapters if there's like a book that's got part one, part two, part three with chapters within that it breaks it down like that as well. It's a really good idea to be able to have that space for discussion because it means you're never going to be accidentally spoiling yourself. You, you can just go into the chapter you've read and you can chat about it in that chapter you can have a little introductory chat you can introduce yourself you can review the book at the end of it fable is also a really cool platform because not only does it allow you to run this book club side of things you can also run like private book clubs with your friends you can join other people's book clubs that they've made such as the tiny book club but you can also rate and review your books you can store your tbr you can actually buy ebooks through fable as well so if you want to read the book that we're reading in each month but you don't own it physically you can buy it as an ebook through fable it's a really cool platform and i am very very excited to be working with them to bring you the tiny book club so if you would like to join this book club there is a link down below the first book we're going to be reading is a spindle splintered by Alex E. Harrow. This one is very teeny weeny, it's just shy of 120 pages so it's perfect for this book club. It's a fantasy, it is a Sleeping Beauty retelling so this will be our August book club pick. For September we're going to be reading Harlequin Butterfly by Toe Enjo. This one I don't even know for the blurb what this one's about. I was recommended this one a couple of months back when I was filming an indie bookshop tour in London. I just, you know when you read a blurb and you're like mm, I'm not really sure what that's about but I'm gonna go for it. It's, it's a 
puzzle, one puzzle after another, taking you on a mind-bending journey into the imagination. I, I think it kind of explores the idea of language a little bit as well. When a book has a blurb like this, I already feel like it's gonna be an interesting one to discuss because I'm already like, what is this about? And our October pick, which I don't own yet, is Psycho by Robert Block, which is obviously the inspiration for the film Psycho. I watched the film, never read the book, but I had to put a horror in there for October. So that's the Tiny Book Club. If you would like to join along at any point, it's completely free link down below. Anyone can join. You do not have to pay anything. You do not have to commit to anything. It is just easy going and for people that just want to read a book club book but don't want it to be super long. Okay, I'm gonna start my busy week now. So I nipped into Bath this morning and of course that resulted in me buying some books at Mr. B's. This is my favourite indie of all time. I just, I love it in there so much. It's so cosy, it's so welcoming and I always find books in there that I've ne not seen anywhere else. So I bought two books. They were both hardback books, which was not my intention. I mean, I didn't even necessarily intend to buy any, but you know, when in Mr. B's. <laughs> okay, the first book that I bought is A Short Walk Through a Wide World by Douglas Westerbeek, Wester Westerbeek, Wester Westerbeek. Back. This. I saw the cover of this one and thought this looks like a book about books and decided to pick it up. It kind of is more about travel actually, but the tagline on the front says, if you could never stay, where would you go? Initially, it kind of gave me Addy LaRue vibes. And to be honest, the blurb continues to do that. So it's set initially in Paris in 1885. Aubrey Tovell, a spoiled and stubborn nine-year-old girl comes across a wooden puzzle ball on her walk home from school. She tosses it over a fence only to find it in her satchel that evening. Days later at the family dinner table, she begins to succumb to mysterious illness. When a visit to a doctor only makes her worse, she flees to the outskirts of the city where she realizes that, this, that, is, that it is this very act of movement that keeps her alive. She begins her incredible lifelong journey around the world, constantly on the run from her condition. From the scorched dunes of the Kalanchio Sand Sea to the snow-packed peaks of the Himalayas, from a bottomless well in a Parisian country yard to the shelves of an infinite underground library, we follow Aubrey as she learns what it takes to survive and ultimately to truly live. But the longer she wanders, the clearer it becomes that the world she travels through is not quite the same as everyone else's. I just think this sounds great. So obviously I picked up this. And then I also got Experienced by Kate Young. So the front of this one definitely drew me in for the two reviews. Beth O'Leary says it's clever, sexy, and joyful. And Caroline O'Donoghue, who ties into a book that I'm going to tell you about in a minute, says a fizzing roller coaster of a rom com, the sexiest book you've, you'll read all year. Also, this one is signed. Betty loves May, but Betty and May are on a break, so Betty can catch up on the decade of dating experiences she missed before she came out. So Betty is reluctantly on a dating odyssey, a quest to have lots of casual sex with lots of hot women and come back to May more experienced and more certain about what she wants. And now she has new friend Ruth as her dating guide, she can't possibly fail. It's just for three months, then she'll be back with May. It's the perfect plan, isn't it? This kind of gives me a similar vibe to In at the Deep End by Kate Davies, which I read years ago and just absolutely loved. So I picked this one up as well. There were honestly so many books in there that I wanted, but I had to refrain, so. <laughs> And that's my little haul. I did decide on what book I'm gonna be reading this week, and that is Caroline O'Donoghue's The Rachel Incident, as in the same Caroline O'Donoghue who blurbed the front of this book. This one, I've been told that the blurb doesn't really capture as much of what the story is about. A bookseller recommended me this one and said that it's like a bit more than it just says on the blurb, but the blurb says, everyone in Cork remembers The Rachel Incident, but what really happened? It's simple, it's complicated. It's about love, sex, and friendship. It's definitely about betrayal, and above all, it's the story of Rachel and James, two 20-somethings who met at a bookshop, became best friends, and spent 
spent one unforgettable year screwing up and growing up. I hate that it's got a little tip dot sticker printed on the book cover. Why do stickers get printed on book covers? I know that there's a company that I think sells stickers for book covers that go over the top of the printed on ones so you can still have the look of the book without the sticker on which is a pretty good idea. I'm excited about this one. I haven't started it yet but I will do so later today. It is Wednesday, which means it is wedding day. I am just about to leave to head to my friend's wedding. It's quite nice to be a guest to this one and not a photographer. As much as I enjoy the photography aspect of weddings, it is it is nice to just be able to mingle and just take it a little bit more chill. So I'm looking forward to that. I have got half an hour left in the audiobook for Blue Sisters and I am not ready for this book to end. This has been a pretty emotional journey. I was listening to it whilst I was getting ready earlier and I was like, oh, is this gonna make me cry? I, I can't, this can't make me cry. I've just done my wedding face makeup thing. <laughs> so it's been an emotional journey. It's, it's a really beautiful story. It's a really sad story. It's about loss and grief and how different people deal with that. It's about addiction and family. It just, oh, it's a really beautiful story and I've really found the audiobook just brilliant. I, I don't think I expected it to be something I really loved, but it has been. So I'm gonna go traumatize myself now and finish that in the car. This is the outfit for the wedding. I have got a fat face dress, Doc Martin sandals, and my hair and face. I also have this denim jacket, which I feel like I'm not really gonna need, but it, it's coming with me just in case. After the wedding, I'm heading to stay with my friend in Wales for a few days. So we're gonna go to some pretty places and I think probably end up in some bookshops. I'm in Wales with Cal! Yay! Yay! <laughs> We've come to Hay on Wye today. We're now leaving. Hay on Wye, there's a dog. <gasps> it's the huge dog. That is a massive dog. That's a big dog. Anyway, we're gonna go home, watch a film, eat some popcorn, and then go out tomorrow. I'm in Wales. I'm in England. I'm in Wales. Awesome. I'm in England. It's so magical. I'm back in Wales. This is how you skin stones. <laughs> Yay! No, this. No, this. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, come on. Oh, you were doing so well. She's been skimming everyone. <laughs> it's the pressure. Is that one even? Oh, we promise we can do it. She calculated it. <laughs> we got books. Woohoo! This is our hay haul, which is now a term I am coining because it sounds cute. Hey I got eyes, guts, throat bones by Moira Fowley, Riley Sager, the only one left, Julia Armfield, Our Eyes Under the Sea, so many people told me to read this, I, I give it in, and Other People's Clothes by Calla Henkel. And I also got the only one left because we're going to buddy read that. And then If We Were Villains by ML Rio, because yeah. Beth said it's like it's a favourite book, so I have to, have to read it. And then The Witch's Complete Guide to Crystals, because I like crystals, so I'm into that. Bye! Sarah, Sarah Headley, Sarah Headley. It's pretty. It's crystals, it's pretty. pretty. I also got this up. Good research. Bonada! Good morning. Good morning in Welsh, which is, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit Welsh. I literally, no, no. <laughs> I'm a little bit Welsh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, like I'm, like Welsh. Just I'm like a little bit Welsh. No, I have like Welsh heritage yes. on my dad's and side, you had, so. You had to. I got this in my vinyl corner. But yeah, I'm excited about these. Gay on Y. Spent so it. long in there. So good, so good. Yeah, this is our little haul. Today we're heading to Aardvark Books, which is a big book barn thing. And then we're going to Hereford. Fun, 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 fun stuff. <laughs> Why are bookshop employees so law-abiding? I don't know. Why are bookshop employees so law-abiding? They do everything by the book. <laughs> That's so bad. <laughs> Customer, could I have a book for my son, please? Bookseller, I'm afraid we don't do swaps. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs> Well, I finished some books. I am back at my family home and my ear is blocked. It's been blocked for like a week and last night it started giving me vertigo. I've been to the pharmacist about it and they said it's trapped air, but I will go to the doctor if it persists next week when I'm back home, but oh, it's so weird. I've only had vertigo now twice in my life and it is such a strange experience. Obviously did take something to stop it yesterday, but everything is just so weird. Like you move your head a little bit and it's like whoosh, the whole world is like whooshing next to you. It's a very uncomfortable experience. So I feel a little bit spaced out right now. So I don't think my brain is braining too well, but I did finish two books and I want to try and tell you about them. Also, I've had a really good few days, obviously in Wales and at the wedding. It's definitely been the busy week I thought it was going to be, but today is a rest day. I'm just going to spend it reading and I think doing a little bit of drawing and painting. And then tomorrow we have the street party. Every year we've got into the habit of hosting a street party on our front garden here for all like everyone in the neighborhood. And it's just really good fun. Everyone brings food, there's barbecue. So that is tomorrow. And then I am nearly out of the busy week. It's been a good one, but yeah, definitely made weirder by having this locked ear sensation for like the last, I think it's literally been like nine days. It's unpleasant. Thankfully there's no pain with it, but it's just made me feel really disorientated. It's really good fun. <laughs> As I said, we'll be going to the doctor. I finished Blue Sisters by Coco Malore and I nearly cried in the car. I had a full face of wedding makeup so I could not cry and I was driving. So it was an emotional experience, it really was. That book was just fantastic. The observations it made about these characters, the three sisters, they were just so well fleshed out and so believable as characters and so interesting to read about their stories were just absolutely beautiful and brilliant and done in such a delicate way. The writing was so lovely. It was, it flowed so nicely and it never felt too daunting. It always felt really approachable. And I think it was a really good audiobook. I'd heard mixed things about the narrator, but honestly, I got on with it really well and just really liked it and would highly recommend it. I gave it five out of five stars. It was definitely emotional. There's definitely a lot of trigger warnings to check out, but I thought it was great. I also finished Caroline O'Donoghue's The Rachel Incident. I finished this one today. This one was a 
another people watching, people focused novel with, again, very fleshed out characters. We're going between the past and the present. In this one, we're seeing our main character, Rachel, as a pregnant woman who is married, reflecting on her life in her early 20s. And we're kind of seeing the, the crossing of those two stories together and like her looking back on that time and how her life has changed now and some of the characters that we see in her early 20s coming into the present day storyline for her and the contrast of that. Again, really, really interestingly done. Trigger warnings in this one too. Definitely some really good character development in this. I never really liked Rachel too much in this, to be honest, and I don't really think we're meant to initially at the start, at least, and in the middle of the book. She definitely has good character development, and I did like her more towards the end of the book. She was a really interesting character to read about. This is mainly following her in her early 20s as she's kind of trying to navigate finishing college, university, going into the world of work, the difficulties with that, with the recession, everything that's happening around her, financial pressures, family relationships, friend relationships, romantic relationships. It was just covering quite a lot in a short amount of time and it felt like it did have that intensity to it and I really enjoyed it. I, at the start, wasn't too sure if I was going to, to be honest, but once I got like to page 50, 60 onwards and I kind of established the situation that we were in and who these characters were, then it progressed quite well. I think my issue is when it is a slightly dislikable main character, I do think I like to like a main character. I think if I don't like a main character, I need other characters that I do like. And I kind of just felt like semi-neutral about everyone else. So I think that's why I was struggling a little bit more at the start, but I, I did enjoy liking it. And I did end up liking it rather, and I gave it four out of five stars. I think next I'm gonna read Experienced by Kate Young. Not only does Caroline and Donahue blurb this one, but this is one of the newer ones I got on Mr. B's at the start of the week. And I want it well, whenever it was, Sunday, Saturday. I don't know what time is anymore. It's kind of blurring together, but I wanna give this one a go. I think this sounds like it's gonna be really good fun. And I think it's gonna be quite nice and sunny today. And as I said, it is my rest day, so. I'm just gonna sit and read and draw all day. I've completed the busy week, it is done. I had such a good time, but that was so much in such a short period of time. And also it really didn't help that I have blocked ears for the whole week. I think that they have popped now. I think they have. It was trapped air in them and it was just, it was so annoying, especially the dizziness and the vertigo that hit at the end of last week. I have had 24 hours now of no dizziness and I'm, I'm pretty sure that they're popped. You might be thinking like, how do you not know that they're popped? But because they've been blocked for so long, I've kind of lost that feeling of normalcy in my ears, but I think it's okay, which is good because that was really not great, especially over the weekend. Can't believe I actually managed to finish two books and then get halfway through another book as well this week. So that's been pretty good. I'm halfway through Experience by Kate Young, which I am loving so much. This book is really sensual, very sexy. It just does good sex scenes. I'm personally not a fan of the big fantasized over the top unrealistic sex scenes. I love like to feel like what I'm reading about feels realistic and feels like genuinely intimate and has got a good pacing to it and just is actually realistic. And the sex scenes in this book definitely do that and it just feels like such a sexy reading experience. I love it. I love that we're going on this journey with this character and I love the different questions it's bringing up of the morality of why this character's going on this journey. It's really, really good. Love the setting in Bristol. I am definitely going to be going back to Bristol pretty soon, mainly because this book is making me want to, but it's just such a good time. I also am obsessed with the colour covers. Covers on the colour. I just, the co cut colours on the cover. <laughs> I just think they look really nice together as well. Generally, just a great reading experience. I definitely recommend this book if you are after a contemporary with great pacing, great characters, really well fleshed out, a sexual exploration type of story, and just generally something that is really sex positive in a fantastic queer space with loads of LGBTQIA plus characters. I just, I love it so, so much. I will be finishing this in the next vlog that I film. I'm currently halfway through, but I'm wrapping this vlog up here. So thank you very much for coming with me 
on this busy week. As I said at the start of the video, I am starting the tiny book club this month, which I am really excited about. This is a monthly book club. It is completely free. There is no commitment. You can just join in with whichever books you want to join in with. You don't have to join in every single month. You can join in literally whenever you fancy. There is a link down below to that. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one.